welcome everyone. Uh, this is Benjamin Lindsay, uh, managing editor at Backstage. The waiting room is just flowing in right now, so I'll give it another minute or two before we get started. But quick intro for our two awesome guests uh, for this webinar series as part of our slate. Um, telling the devastating real life story of the Mauritanian citizen arrested for alleged connections to the 9-11 terror attacks. The Mauritanian is officially heating up award season with an ensemble led by two-time Oscar winner Jodie Foster, Tahar Rahim, Shailene Woodley, Benedict Cumberbatch, and Zachary Levi. Um, today, we're very lucky to be joined by Foster and Rahim to learn just how this true story came to the screen, the challenges of bringing these characters to life, their character building process, advice to others, and more. Um, so without further ado, Tahar and Jodi, um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I guess the best place to start here, um, as you know, backstage is all about the working actors of the world. So we'll get into the actual character building process for these two awesome roles, but um, best place to start is how this first came to you as an opportunity and why you wanted to uh, sign on in the first place. So Jody, let's start with you and then followed by Dahar. Yeah, pretty simply. I mean, I, I read the script. I knew that Kevin McDonald was going to be the director. So that was, uh, those are the two things that brought me to it. Um, extraordinary screenplay. And uh, I thought Kevin was really the right director, somebody that has this uh, documentary sensibility, understands um, how to put together a number of different characters that each have a different perspective and point of view, honor all of those points of view, have all the facts be correct, but then also has a real cinema appreciation for cinema. And I felt like he was just the right guy. Yeah, absolutely. And Tahar, yeah. what brought you on? Yeah. Um, uh I, I worked with Kevin a few years ago mm -hmm. and uh, we kept in touch over the years and we always wanted to work again together. And uh, someday he sent me a text saying that uh, he might have a beautiful part for me. So I called him back and sent me the script. And uh, and yes, when I read it, I was blown away by, uh, by its quality, by uh, the strength of this character. And uh, knowing Kevin, I knew he would help me to reach uh, uh, the point that is uh, um, <clears throat> that we need to reach to portray Muhammadu. And uh, yeah, it was very moving and very humanistic, a different way to tell this uh, uh, type of story with this topic, mm -hmm. this specific topic. So uh, it was very, very interesting to me. Yeah, absolutely. And, and as Jody says, Kevin has such a rich history in documentary film work. A lot of his films do focus on true to life stories, historical dramas of that nature. Um, what does that entail acting wise to make sure that you're getting it right? It, he obviously makes sure that all the facts are there and whatnot, but to build these characters, how do you make sure that you're getting it right versus a fictional character? What does that entail? Um, I'd say thanks to his, uh, thanks to Kevin's uh, documentary experience, uh, he knows exactly what it is to to shoot real people when they're in their uh, real life uh, genuine emotions. So, uh, so you can't you can't rely on your tricks or your habits or whatever you have to convince him. You know, you have to be real in the moment. So uh, this is a, a a big challenge, but it's very um, uh, very secure when you know that your director is able to 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 see it when it comes out. Hmm. Because when it comes out, you, you're like, okay, I can trust him. He's going to pick the right one. That's for sure. <laughs> and then you build up and build up. And, and, and yeah, just follow the direction. And, and, and Jody, in bringing this real life character to the screen, does it feel, when you're playing a real world person like this, does it feel different from some of the fictional roles that you've done in the past? Yeah, I, I think it's uh, one of the first. I mean, I've only done one other character, uh, real life character, and she was had been dead for a couple hundred years. So I felt right. safe to kind of make some changes uh, with yeah. Nancy. Uh, obviously, you 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 have to honor who they are and the story that, that's being told. Uh, that being said, I told Nancy like, look, I'm not going to do an impersonation of you. I'll definitely have the hair and the lipstick and the mm -hmm. and the um, the nails, but uh, it was important to have the freedom, really, to be able to create a character that could support Muhammadu's story, because that was really our our main goal, was to make sure that uh, Muhammadu's character and Muhammadu's story was supported by the rest of the characters. So I, I did take some liberties. I mean, Nancy Hollander, the real Nancy Hollander is a very nice person, much more polite and nice than my Nancy Hollander. <laughs> Got it. Very rude and 
you know, a little bit loud and bossy, um, Nancy Hollander is much more reserved and subdued. Got it. Okay. So, so yeah. I mean, it, it sounds like you obviously had firsthand experience with Nancy. For Mohamedou, did you also have access to him to her? Yes, I did. Um, we met virtually. Okay. For the first time, and uh, and and I and I, I just showed up as a, as an actor, and I had some questions and, you know, to ask, and uh, and uh, when I when I talked with him over our, our conversation, I, I started to realize that I was meeting some someone very very exceptional mm -hmm. i knew it from the story but when you meet him it's like uh it's it's uh it's sometimes reality is bigger than fiction i mean it's he's got a sense of humor the crazy one he's uh he's got a lot of humility uh sensitivity so there's so many things that you can take out of him because the 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 challenge was to to catch his spirit uh you know as jody said before when it's not a famous person that you have to uh, to uh, portray, you can have some freedom. Mm. And uh, uh, in this case, it was all about uh, finding his spirit and 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 give it back in in a in a respectful way and in a truthful way. Yeah, I, I love that you use that word, his spirit, because I I actually have that listed in my questions here. Just the fact that. He obviously is a man who experienced trauma and isolation for years, but he never lost that spirit. And I'm, cu I'm curious for, for your acting process to bring that to the screen. How did you strike that balance between someone who has these extreme or has experienced this extreme darkness, but also can uh, find the levity in life, maintain his spirit in that way? <coughs> Sorry about his uh, 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 spirit and uh, uh, his uh, uh, witty side. I, when, when I would talk with him, uh, I would just try to, to feel him and take something. And, and the more I would talk with him and, and Kevin and the recordings uh, I had uh, from Kevin when he, when he would talk with him, uh, uh, that was something that I, I, I came to realize. At some point I was like, okay, I think I got it. But for, uh, for uh, the torture scene, it's some, it, it's, it's a, total different gig because uh how could i know what what it feels like to go through this mm -hmm. and uh out of respect to him and the the people in his uh situation i i i needed to to play with uh, some realism i wanted to put myself in, in in realistic conditions so i can uh taste it and feel it otherwise i i i can't believe in what i'm doing I, i'll see myself as a as an actor who is faking something. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't come from inside, I don't believe uh, in, in it, and the audience would not believe in it. So you know, I, I just wanted to experience it like a little bit like, uh, like in reality uh, with real shackles and cold cells and, and uh, waterboarding. And yeah, uh, that was the only way to make it. So, so because it, when, when, I, when I would talk to, to Mohamedou, I, I tried once maybe twice. I wanted to ask him about uh, what he's been through, what he, he, to have some answers about this uh, horrible period. Mm -hmm. And, and suddenly he would, uh, he would feel uncomfortable and you, you, you would see his uh, trauma and, and I didn't want to embarrass him. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, no, no way. I'm not going to talk about it with him. Yeah. I want to spend time with him and, and, and the rest, I'll find a way to do it. Yeah, yeah. So, so you did find what? Correct me if I'm wrong. My understanding now is that you did find ways to kind of mimic the experience for you to see what it was actually like. Did you, so, did you did you find ways to isolate yourself and to do things like that? Is that what you mean? Uh, I mentally, I did isolate myself. Yeah. Um, the thing is, when you finally. Uh, catch your character, uh, these type of characters. Uh, I, I was too scared to lose him. So I, I, I kept him with me all the time, even if I was in my hotel room. And uh, with the experience of acting, you can, uh, I mean, you can fake a little when you meet people, but it's still in the back of your head. Uh, yeah, that I had to do it uh, at such a certain point that it was so, it was very hard for me to get to get away from uh, mm. this part when I ended up the shooting. It took me three weeks, it never happened to me before. 
and uh, yeah, experiencing with real shackles and and uh, for, I don't know, make a cell as cold as possible hmm. helped me because uh, it was real. Yeah, yeah. So um, it helped me. I mean, I did that for just a, a while, which there, there's nothing compares to to what he's been through. But uh, my my job is to to make it bigger. Yeah, absolutely. And, and to to uh, less extreme degree, Jody, you're also talking about the externals of your character. You, you you mentioned that you wanted Nancy's lipstick, and you wanted her hair, and you wanted the nails. Um, but you also find a way into her that. Uh, she, she leads, she operates in the world very intellectually driven and I feel like she has a purpose with everything she, thing she's doing. Um, her relationship with Shailene Woodley, for instance, is all about how she's not there to prove his innocence, she's only there to ensure him his rights, um, which I think is an interesting way to, uh, to operate in a case like this, but a necessary way. Mm -hmm. um, so so what, what was that decision making process for you? And how did it differ from the real Nancy? You say that you took some liberties as well. Yeah, the process of building a character, right? Everybody does right. it differently. Um, some people put on a funny red nose. You know, some people chant to themselves. Some people drink coffee and make jokes. You know, we all have our own way that we've come up with in order to do the same thing, which is to inhabit as much truth as possible, right? Uh, and to make yourself available when the moment comes. Um, so for me, there's always like two parts to it. The first part is, uh, the intellectual part, preparation, making decisions and all the choices, right? That's all the, it's almost the directorial work that we do either as a director or as an actor where you make lists and you, uh, you know, write journals and, you know, you do all that stuff where you try to figure stuff out, you interpret the text, you go over the text, would it be better if this is true, is this true? And then at some point, somebody says action. Mm -hmm. And all of that stuff either goes out the window or goes into your body. I don't know where it goes, but um, <laughs> at that point, uh, when you're talking about execution, hopefully you have ingested the information that you need and you work in a way that's much more instinctual. And, you know, some movies require continually honing that process and staying focused and lots of, lots of, um, lots of effort and some require less effort. And I, and I think that once you establish your character and you've got what they look like and what they feel like and what they move like and how they react to things, then you can just drink some coffee. Yeah. <laughs> right, because it's, yeah. you know, it's already there. Um, I, I always say like, that's the difference between the first uh, prep, so those, those two or three weeks, and then the first two weeks of shooting and then everything else. The rest of it is, once you, once you get past that time, you've already, you figured out what your character is. Um, you know, Nancy is a bunch of contradictions and she would agree with me when I say that. Um, you know, that, that she's somebody who's, um, who's so compassionate in some ways and yet is very defended. Mm -hmm. um, and if you can, if you, if I always like to identify the part of the character that they are ashamed of that they wouldn't want anyone to know. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think in Nancy's case, I think that um, she's very, has had to have been very self-protective because she's, you know, 90% of her cases that people are guilty. Mm -hmm. And she has made this mission of social justice to defend people under the rule of law as per the constitution because they deserve a defense whether they're guilty or not. And she will sure. often say, I don't care whether they're guilty or not. It doesn't make any difference to me. I still, I'm just here to defend them. I wanna know their story. And she will actually even say something like, in fact, it's better if they're guilty because then I can really you know, do my job. But it takes a toll. And, and I do feel that Nancy has been hurt by that over and over mm -hmm. again. She's mm -hmm. had to create, create a persona and a character that in some ways um, already is suspicious of people because she doesn't want to be hurt again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and that was a fun thing to dismantle through Muhammadu. Nancy changes over the course of the time that she meets Muhammadu and becomes a more compassionate and vulnerable person. Yeah, yeah. And is, is that a journey that she expressed to you in terms, I mean, the film aside, that was her experience with the real life Muhammadu. Well, I think so. And I could glean it from the fact that she genuinely loves him. Yeah. I mean, she really loves him. And you have to remember the last five years that she spent with Mohamedou, um, going to his cell, as did, as did Terry uh, Duncan, who was played mm -hmm. by Shailene Woodley, um, his court case was over. They went because they loved him and because yeah. they wanted to keep him company. 
Yeah. And we watched television and they, you know, used the treadmill and they made recipes and cooked and, you know, tended his tiny little tomato plant that finally, after 12 years, they managed to give him. Um, and they did that because they cared about him. And they made this film. They, they helped him publish this book and he helped him make this movie and be a part of this film because they cared about his story. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, obviously, obviously that relationship is pretty awesome to see both of you bringing it to the screen. Um, we're, we're talking about the acting process, how you found these characters. How do you find that on the day with each other? I, um, you, you speak to the fact that part of it is about all the prep work and throw it out the window. So how did you two kind of build your rapport for what's ultimately captured on screen for these pretty climactic and uh, significant scenes through the course of the film? Um, Tahar, let's start with you, and then then we'll hear from Jody. When uh, when you have the luck to work with uh, uh, such a great actress as Jody is, needless to say that she's an icon and one of the best actresses uh, of the world. It helps you a lot. It's sometimes at some point you just have to follow. You know, you try. It, it's scripted. So uh, as I said it before, it's like a dance hmm. choreography. It's scripted. You do what you have to do, and at some point. I don't know, something happens and you feel like uh, maybe I could try something with, the, with my partner and the partner answers. And then you start to develop something that it's beyond the words, that it's not written, but what you, 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 you don't prepare what's written between the lines. Mm. It has to happen in the moment. Mm. And it's hard to find the right words to describe it because, uh, you lose space, you lose time, you're, you're in the present mm -hmm. at this moment. Mm -hmm. And it can only happen when you worked before, and it worked enough before, and when you have a, 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 a partner that is, that, that's, that is here to, for the same thing as you are here, a movie. Yeah. And a movie, and not just your performance or, you know, shine or whatever. You just surrender to it. Yeah. And I imagine that uh, mirrors your experience a bit as well, Jody. Could you speak to that as well? Yeah, I mean, the best part of the process is what you do in dialogue with other people. Um, how you find your character in dialogue with someone else. I mean, that's the best part, right? Making movies, I was telling Tahar, like doing the movies where you're, oh, it's just you and a big green screen. Mm -hmm. This is the worst, <laughs> right? Because it's, it's almost like you're, it's just you and a big mirror looking at yourself. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, you know, you treasure those moments where you're able to react uh, and to, to have your performance really shaped by the other character and by the other person. Um, and it is like a dance. I mean, I, I, I feel that in some ways it's almost like being an athlete, being an actor, where over the years, or even instinctually, you understand that you carry two things at once. You carry uh, the more intellectual side, the decisions that you make, the choreography, and on the other side is just the pure dance of it. And you're always balancing those two, you know, being inside the experience, but also outside the experience enough to be able to <laughs> change things and change things, to be aware, um, to be able to be inside the moment so that you have that freedom of being lost, but also there's a boom guy and, you know, there's a shadow and you make sure that you're not blocking the other actor, you know, that, that sort of balance of awareness and that's really a lesson that i take into life too you know life is also about balancing those two things yeah yeah certainly um well in our last handful of moments here or mi minutes rather I see um, there's a bunch of questions yes we we did reach out beforehand for our registered audience today M most of them of course are the working actors of backstage cool. um i'd love to run through some audience questions and just see what uh what you guys have to say a lot of them are asking for kind of the the well hard earned advice that both of you have in the industry. Um, first question comes from Maritza Vives. Did you have periods of time when nothing happened, you weren't getting work or auditions, you were rejected, and how do you push through that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it happened. Even if I have a uh, short career because I've been working in, in the business t 12 years ago, uh when it happens what you have to do i think you you don't get overwhelmed by your fear and just you know relax and work i mean mm -hmm. there's uh that's the only way to to uh, uh to improve your tool and uh you know you can read you can watch movies and spend time with people observing that helps a lot you know sitting i like to sit in a 
in a in a terrace, drink a coffee, smoke a cigarette, and and watch people just evolving and and, and the way they talk. I, I watch a lot of documentaries because uh, uh, they 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 are who they are. They're not composing and doing something. It's like it's genuine uh, emotions. Like okay, I, I was not that good when I did that. This guy is way much better <laughs> because it's real. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, you got to be patient. I know sometimes it's hard, but uh, you know, keep working and dreaming. It can happen to anybody, everybody. Of course, of course. And, and, and Jody, you, you've been working for a bit more than 12 years. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Did you ever find yourself in a dry spell or just a creative rut? And how, how did you push through that? Many times, all the time. And questioning whether I wanted to be an actor or not. That happens to me, I don't know, maybe at least once every six months. Um, Fair yeah, after 55 years in the business and starting when I was three years old, um, it's a little bit of a different path for me. But um, I think that one of the best things that you can do is to become a whole person um, and to work on yourself as a human being um, because you have to bring something to the table. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 when people say, you know, how do you prepare for creating a character or making a movie? Well, I prepare by loving them and by understanding them and being curious about them and referring what the character is happening to things that I'm working on in my own life and that I'm trying to figure out. And, you know, cause it is an adventure, it's a journey. You don't really know where it's headed. And you learn that through the course of the making the film. I feel like movie making has made me just be a better person. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm always surprised by how not a great person I was. And the, you know, how well, the, the, it is, it's very humble. It's a very humble job. You certainly get a lot of humility. Yeah, a, a humble job and also a, a very personal one, it sounds like. I mean, you are bringing yourself to a character. You're putting yourself out there in the audition room. Um, we have a question here from Oda Dalen. Um, tips on how to not give a damn. How do you get rid of negativity? How do you, uh, let's see, negativity which holds you back or the constant thought of how you appear to others? Um, how, how do you find that balance between pursuing what you love while also maybe being uh, self-conscious. Oh, uh, oh, oh, stop! You mean when we're when we're acting and, and, huh. and during? I mean, in the the moment where when oh, we're yeah. performing. You, maybe in in the audition room. How how do you know? Oh, oh, uh, I hate that. About you. <laughs> yeah, I hate it. I hate it because it's uh, uh I mean, you you can't be at your at your top when you're auditioning. I mean, you're in front of a a small camera there's no uh, no no set no clothes no uh costumes no 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 makeup nothing helps you to to perform and 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 i think you, you just need to relax because uh uh it's it's very hard and it took me a lot of time to understand that that the the casting director or the director himself uh they're seeking for something deeper than just uh, uh a performance that you're trying to give Mm -hmm. when you make an audition. I think they're seeking for, for a nature sometimes or, a, uh, I don't know, being a, a, at your ease or a, a physic. I don't know, but so at some point you just have to be uh, truthful and generous. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything that you would add to that, Jody? Yeah, I mean, I always, um, you know, it, it's hard to say, like, just relax, just be yourself, be confident. You know, yeah. that's, that's tough. It's okay. a tough thing to pass on to people. But um, I do feel like every answer that you need is inside of you. Mm. And um, sometimes that takes a lot of years to understand that, that everything you need is inside of you already. And um, if you can find a way to relax and let that come through, to let that truth come through, that um, you don't need to quite work so hard. Um, and if you, sometimes if you do work hard, extraneous things get in your way. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, that's a meditation. And that's, that's also just knowing yourself more yeah. you know come to know yourself more uh, I, I always say with directors especially but also with actors is you know what you bring to the table is what you bring to the psychiatrist's couch so mm -hmm. your problems as an actor your problems as a director are the same problems you have with your wife the same problems you have with your <laughs> children you know mm -hmm. become a more aware person more conscious person and you'll be a better actor yeah yeah absolutely i love that um and we, we're we're touching on directing now i do have a question here about the actor's relationship with directors, and Jody, of course, you direct as well. Um, so Mahari Boyle wants to know, is it a relationship that you prefer to be very close and collaborative, or do you like to work on your character by yourself? What does that balance look like uh, when you're finding a character? 
Yeah, for me, you know, it's not always my decision. It's the director who make, he's the visioneer, he or she mm -hmm. is the visioneer, and they're the people that make the decision about the tone of the film, but also the tone of the relationship. So some directors like a lot of collaboration, they like a lot of ideas and a lot of opinions, and they feed on that and they use that, and some are like, a oh, wall. Well. So mm -hmm. you have to kind of read them, it's their party, and they get to decide how it is. You know, that being said, my preferred way, um, I like a lot of collabor fil filmmaker collaborate myself, many actors don't. I like to collaborate a lot, but I, yeah, I do want them to stay out of my head. Mm -hmm. I really want them in my process. I don't want them to sit down and hold my hand and say like, let's talk about when you were a child. It's like, no, you tell me what you want. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go do it myself yeah. and I'll bring it back to you and you can say yes or no. Like, I don't, I don't really like uh, feeling like vampired at all. And um, I do like those boundaries a bit. So yeah, I have a whole list if they're interested. I have a real long list of things I hate that directors do. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. yeah. Fair enough. Anything that you would add to her? What, what, what's uh, your preferred relationship like? Uh, fuck. It depends on, really, it depends on the director and uh, the trust you have on your director. When, when I did my first movies, uh, I, I, I went to, to, to theater um, school, so I learned all those, uh, the 50 questions you have to, mm -hmm. to ask your character just to know if he likes uh, to eat candies or not. And the more you go, the, the, <laughs> the less you need this, finally. There's, there might be three or four questions that are essentials, that are essential. And uh, when I started, I would talk to my directors. I wanted to know more about his psychology, his background, what he's done right before the scene. It helped me because I felt insecure and I thought there was only one method. But I think that uh, uh, a method belongs to a movie. Mm -hmm. and, and, and who makes the movie? The director. So uh, it's just a question of trust. And sometimes I need to ask some question. I like to have a very short answer because when they started talk and talk and talk, I, uh, I, I, I just yeah. lose myself. And I'm like, well, what do you, what do you want me to do? To be yeah. sad or happy or both of me? So it has to be, yeah, a, a bit more shorter. And uh, just, I want them to save me when I'm lost sometimes. Yeah. But I like to create my thing on my, on my side. And then I come on set and I have something to, to propose. Mm -hmm. And we we'll go from there. All fair, all fair. Um, well, as a final question for you then, thank you both for your time. This has been uh, so fun to have, pick your brain a little bit, have your ear and uh, for sharing with our audience today. Um, I'd love to hear one piece of advice that you would give your younger self. So something that you wish you knew when you were first getting your start in this industry, something you've learned along the way, um, what would it be? Oh, no. Tahara, let's start with you. <laughs> wow, I don't know. Uh, oh. What would I say to? I mean, I can me? start. I can start. I'm just, just, okay. I mean, when I, I was, I'd say, I, was you know, I, sorry. I didn't know that I didn't know that I could say no. I thought I had to say uh, yes to everything because I was yeah. little and I didn't know and it was an adult and the adult said, you know, hold the telephone like this and mm -hmm. uh, you know twirl your finger at the same time and I was like, uh, okay, you know, I have <laughs> right. to say yes. Uh, and. Um, there, uh, I didn't understand that I had the right to collaborate and to identify what felt wrong and what, what felt right. Um, mm. So, yeah. That's important. That's important to, to learn along the way. Mm. Um, Tahar, have you, have you thought of something or should, should we wrap <laughs> up there? It's tough, but if I could say something to, to little me, <laughs> I, I'd tell him, uh, uh, stay a kid as long as you can. <laughs> 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 And, and keep that, going. Yeah, yeah. And, and keeping that mindset, that's important to acting, right? You, you, gotta, oh, yeah. you gotta have that kid playfulness, for sure. To me, to me, it's a playground. You, you, yeah. you, you, that, that's what's magical with acting, because uh, you have the right to be someone else, and, and some people can love you for that. <laughs> it's crazy. You just play. Finally. Yeah. I mean, it's hard, of course, but you play. Absolutely. Well, um, Jody Tahar, thank you so much for joining us today. This was such a treat. And congrats on the new film. Um, everyone keep an eye out for it next month when it hits theaters. <laughs> um, and thank you everyone for joining us today. We will see you next time. I'm Benjamin Lindsay and uh, have a good rest of your week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.